guys, it's me, Timmy! It's not, it's not Timmy at all. It's me, the guy who makes Timmy's little shows on Sandbox Time. So today, we're gonna talk about the Brooder... Dozer D5. RC conversion. That's right, kids. This remote control here tells this thing to do stuff. Well, my fingers tell these things to do stuff, and then it tells this guy to move the tracks or move the blade up and down. Now you're wondering, boy, Timmy, how do you do it? Well, kids, let me show you. Underneath this toy is a bunch of electronics and servos and all kinds of cool stuff. So we'll get into this and then I'll show you how to set this guy up so that this thing works flawless. Let's get to it. All right, so let's break this thing down. First, you need to buy one Bruder D5 dozer. Retail price, depending where you are in the United States, is about $29, $28. Here in Canada, about $35 around the world. I'm not sure, but if you need to know how to buy it, there's a link in my description that shows you exactly where to get these. Now, I'm just talking about the toy itself, not the RC stuff. The RC stuff, you'll probably have to go to your local RC shop or look online for specific items, and then you can start building it. But let's take this thing apart. Number one, Bruder makes it awesome to get at this. And I'm just being sarcastic because it's a nightmare. There's a lot of tabs in here that you have to find and remove by breaking them or cutting them. But you'll need a couple special tools. Uh, what I've used here are some picks. I got these. Just shove these in pull it and then you can work your way around. So there's a couple in here and I'll show you exactly where they are and what we're gonna do to get rid of them. But let's take the top off. Now this specific model here, I have removed most of the tab so that this just comes apart. And as you can see, this looks like sand, but it's not. It's just hot glue with a bunch of lead pellets from, you know, when you're going hunting or uh, creating shotgun shells. There's lots of little pellets, lead pellets. There's a servo here to move the arm up and down and I've got a linkage in here. And so whenever I move it, as you can see, that moves up and down. And it's in the spot where the old brooder linkage was, right? So this is the brooder stuff. I removed it and put this one here. So whenever I move the stick, this goes up and down. Now, another thing I've also done here is I put screws so it does not tilt from left to right. I wanted to keep the blade straight. You can change that. You can try and add a servo here, um, a little mini servo somewhere. I decided it just wasn't worth it. Here's our receiver. And we're using a FlySky receiver, 10 channel. I don't need chan 10 channels. I just got it because it was one heck of a deal. I mean, for less than $80, you can get a receiver and a transmitter for about 80 bucks Canadian. Uh, we do have the battery tucked up inside here. All right, and this battery is using a Dean's connector. So I have to solder on a Dean's connection on the opposite side of the wires. These wires go up to a switch. There's a switch right there. This says on or off, right? Right beside the driver. And there is our little plug to check um, when we're charging and when we're not charging to see what our battery is running uh, as far as power. So if we're getting low, then we can know when to change the battery. But in the belly of the beast are more wires and two servos. Now, I decided to go with the servo option here because if we flip this guy around, these two servos are running the rear sprockets. Now, what I've done here is I've cut this out to the shape of the servos. Okay, I've glued them in with some hot glue and I've also used a metal rod or a threaded rod and made sure that I can connect this. As you can see, if we move this guy back, there's a threaded rod on the inside, right? And this holds the servos together so they don't move around. 
now. It's a little bit tight, but you'll see there's a hole here. That's where one of the uh, the tabs were. There was another one, I believe, back here that was holding this together. And then there's some right here and right there uh, that hold this dozer together. So as you can see, there's tabs there. And I just shave the ends of the tab so it doesn't click anymore. It just stays uh, loose. I've had to cut some of this here to allow for the movement of the servo horn here. And also massage this just a touch as well. Now I've added the weight because this needs a little bit of weight or else it'll just sit there and peel out. As for the sprocket, um, I don't really want to take this apart right now because it is a bit of a nightmare to put these tracks back on. Uh, you will notice when you are making this conversion that the tracks brand new will be very tight. Give it about a couple hours of playing and they'll be nice and saggy. Uh, at which point you may decide to... At which point you may decide to take a link out, which I have. In this case, I've taken a link out. Now it's really tight again. But the sprocket here has screws. I've put little uh, screws in here. I think these are like M2 screws. Um, and this will help uh, grip because these little teeth on the toy itself do not do a very good job. You'll get a lot of skipping. This will grip it a lot better and it gives you that forward momentum or reverse. Um, I have on here some hot glue inside and then I've put the head of the servo. So the servo horn or the top, those star shaped ones, uh, something like that. Okay, I've put it inside and I've cut this down substantially. It used to be much wider, but if you can see in here, maybe focus, baby, focus. There we go. You can see I've cut it down pretty much flush with where the original teeth are from the uh, sprocket. And then I just screwed this in just to have some grip. But that's how I've done that. I've got more weights inside here. All right, and this thing weighs about five pounds-ish, something like that. Lots of dirt, we've been using it. Another thing I've also done is I've got some zip ties and I cut them down to the width of the track and I have super glued them on. And now it gives me that extra tread height. Uh, I don't know if you can see there, there's a little bit extra tread because these tracks are not very good at gripping. This will give you an extra bit of tread height. That you can see there. All right, guys. A little bit of Velcro inside here to hold the battery on. I am running a 13 amp, uh, sorry, 1300 milliamp. Uh, it's a 7.4 volt battery. Uh, this is a Gen Zace battery. Uh, it's the battery of choice for myself. Uh, it's what I like using. They're reliable, they're really good. And um, it fits nicely in there and everything is nice and tidy and it works. All right, one last thing before we go on to the electronic side of it. There's going to be some cutting required. In this section here, this bulkhead was much higher. You will need a pair of snippers or a Dremel tool, but you'll need to cut some of this out. Uh, as well as back here, there's a little bit of work that needed to be done and trimmed. I've also done a lot of trimming in here okay to get this servo to fit uh, so you will have to cut up a little bit i've also made a bit of a boo-boo here i cut this because the way i originally wanted to have the servo was up here with a, um, a rod going across which would mean that rod would move in this location but instead i decided to make it look cleaner but that cleaner looks uglier because of this mistake so if you're doing it just make sure remember don't be cutting anything out here just cut the spots that I have mentioned. You will probably have to trim off some of these little horns here that might get in the way. Um, and a lot of it is just in the body inside here to make room for that. If you guys enjoy this video, hit that like button and please subscribe if you can. And hit that notification button because, well, I can't do it for you, so you'll have to do it. Thanks guys for watching another episode and there'll be a part two coming up. Oh,